Hello, viola players. Congratulations. You are on the last piece of Suzuki book one. So, um, Gavat is a doozy and I'm going to help you through it. I'm going to make three videos for this very difficult piece. This video is going to cover lines one through four. All right. I'm starting away from the page first. I'm going to play a C, a third finger on my G string. I'm going to play three C's and then do a bow lift and a rest like this. Bow lift. low two on my A string. All right. So same rhythm, same bow lift. We're just going to replace that with a high C like this. And if you were paying attention and you've seen my other videos, you know that that involves a large elbow swing, right? I'm going to do it one more time so you can watch that elbow swing. Okay, so now let's try that together. We'll do it a couple times. All right, set your low C. Ready, go. Bow lift. Bow lift. One more. Bow lift. So if you're thinking, that feels familiar to me. I feel like I've gone from a C to a C before. You have in Minuet 2 and three. So it's just a review. Um, we're bringing back some familiar concepts in this brand new piece. Now, if you look at measure two, we've got these notes. And we also have something else that you've had in minuet three. We have a grace note. That grace note is on a B. All right. So you're going to do a quick little B before your high C natural like this. Now, the bullets aren't marked in your music, but they are there. I know you, that I have to do a bow lift there because there is a down bow over measure three, and my bow would not be a down bow unless I did a bow lift. So if you need to mark those in, um, basically every rest has a bow lift over it. So go ahead and mark them in if you're going to forget. All right, we're going to do that with the grace note one more time. Ready, go. All right, so if you're scanning over your music, I'm gonna pop to measure four next. It's the same concept. All right, that's measure four, the last measure of line one. Let me do that one more time. Something that is interesting about the grace note in measure four is that it is an F sharp. All right, you have F naturals in the rest of this piece, but if you look, there's a teeny, tiny little sharp in front of that grace note. So just make sure that you're doing an F sharp for the grace note in measure four. All right, the rest of the grace notes are either the same or pretty self-explanatory. So next I'm gonna talk about the rhythm. This piece is very difficult to find a speed that works for everything. So if we're looking at the rhythm of measures one and two, the rhythm would go, this is my beat, do day, do day, do day, do day, do, 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 rest. All right, so what that means for our bow is that we have a combination of short bows for our do days and long bows for our quarter notes, our do's. So um, I'm going to just practice that rhythm on an open D. And notice there's those staccato dots over your notes. So we have a nice short bow stroke for our eighth notes, for our due days. And then a longer bow stroke and a smoother, slightly smoother bow stroke for our quarter notes, like so. All right, let's try that at that speed one more time. So my beat is one, two, three, four. Bow lift. All right. Now we're looking at those notes. Oh 
man, we got a fourth finger right off the bat, right? Well, let's slow down that rhythm, but let's make sure that our eighth notes and our quarter notes remain the same in relationship to each other. So we're gonna slow down that beat to start. Right, you might need to slow it down more than this, and that is okay. There is no shame in that game. All right, so do day, do day, do day, do day, do, do, do. So notice we're going at a speed right now, a learning speed where our quarter notes might sound like half notes, and that is okay. So let's practice the rhythm at that speed. Do day, do day, ready, go. <laughs> pitches to this. Um, the notes in measures one through six are not particularly hard. Just make sure that you're keeping your eighth notes and your quarter notes even to each other. So I'm going to play measures one through six and then we will talk about measure seven because it is a whole nother animal. So do day, do day, do day, go. <laughs> finger for that A. You can do it. You're at the last song of the book. You can handle your fourth finger there by now. All right. Now measure seven, I think is actually the hardest one of these two lines. So measure seven, I'm going to play measure seven and eight because they make more sense together. And then we'll talk about the mystery note at the end of measure seven. <laughs> So measure seven, we're going along just fine. And what is that? Well, if you look at it, it's on a line. That note's on a line, right? It's on the bottom line of our music staff, which means it's below our open G. And we haven't had any C string notes since etude. But if we look at that compared to an open G, which is the first note of measure eight, if you need a reference, um, it is one note below. That means it's a third finger on our C string, otherwise known as an F, but there is a sharp in front of that F. So we know from minuet two that when there is a sharp on our third finger, we are going to raise it so that it would be touching, like if our fourth finger were down, they would be touching, right? So we'll have a space between one, two, and three on our C string for that nice high three. So that note's called an F sharp. And we come to it from a first finger, a low A on our G string, right? So that's a big stretch across the string. So let's practice that. We're going to go from our first finger on our G string and then stretch, C, space, space, and then you can go to your open G. Let's try those three notes again. Ready? Go. A, stretch to the F sharp, open G, and last time, ready, go. Okay, now I'm going to put it into context, and you'll really know that you've hit that F sharp right if it sounds, it really leans into that G. It's called the leading tone. It leads you right to that G. All right, so I'm going to do measures seven and eight for you. Think about your do's and do days too, in addition to your big stretch. Ready, go. <laughs> Moving right along, 
The next two lines are a little bit of a breather before some more difficult stuff comes in. The only thing to think about is the speed of your eighth notes versus your quarter notes. Everything else is pretty much review from before. So I'm gonna play through those two lines um, up until where it says fine at the end of line four, just so that you got it. Um, and then that's all you need for lines one through four. <laughs> And then when it says, ah, tempo in the following measure, you go on as if nothing has ever happened. So I'm going to start from measure 13. Bye.